if you ask 10 people who know about sports and about sports broadcasting to make the list of the top five broadcasters ever since the beginning of radio and television, Dick would be near the top of everybody's list, if not at the very top. While I was earning my master's uh, and then eventually my doctorate, that uh, the IU Sports Network developed, and uh, having won that audition, there was uh, the excitement of being the announcer for IU football and basketball, and at the same time uh, earning my degree and master's. And because I, I'm sure because of the success of the the network. They waived the fact that uh, I could go from my master's and continue on and earn my doctorate, which all happened in a span of a little over four years. And I thought for certain Indiana was going to hire me. And I believe that had they hired me to be a professor and the broadcaster, I'd still be on campus happy uh, as I am today. And my, as I left Indiana to come to California and teach and coach at Cal State Northridge, I, I made a vow to myself that someday, hopefully, I'll be able to give back to Indiana for all that they have given to me. This studio that we are in, he has partly, he's partly responsible financially and otherwise that we have this state-of-the-art distant learning classroom that he has really helped us and we've been able, as, as honor obviously is named after him. But long before distance education classrooms existed, Dick took his role as college professor very seriously. I was more nervous every day getting in front of my first class, a freshman class in health education, 50 students, and you never knew which one was going to raise their hand. I was more nervous every day getting ready for that than doing a Super Bowl. Uh, the challenge of the raised hand is still about as exciting a moment as any person can experience. Four or five years later, Gene Autry, who owned both a radio and TV station in Los Angeles, uh, they had an opening on, for television, paying a grand total of $18,000 a year. I auditioned for it and won that job, and then a whole new life began. As Dick moved on to a full-time broadcasting career, he still relied on his teaching skills as a play-by-play -play announcer to prepare for each game is preparing for that lecture. And when I look into a camera and make my opening remarks, I'm really looking into a classroom. There's not 50, there's 50 million perhaps. And I'm trying to anticipate who's raising their hand. Dick is more interested than uh, in, in being a teacher about the game and what's happening in and around the game as opposed to what's actually taking place on the field. You can see what's going on on the field. He doesn't have to tell you that. But the interesting part is what happens around the game. Dick's home is a collection of awards and memorabilia from his career. But it's the relationships he developed over the years that are the most meaningful to him. More than the awards, uh, the pictures of people that with whom I've worked uh, and associated, uh, that's more important. Um, yeah, for example, John Wooden, having a chance to do the UCLA games for nine years. They won eight national titles, made me a pretty good announcer that John Wooden is the greatest man other than my father than I've ever known. But then there's Dick's catchphrase, oh my. Dick has said, those two words have become my great friend as a broadcaster, describing the total range of athletic emotions from deep despair to triumphant exultation. But where did the phrase come from? Oh my came from Indiana. Now, Indiana should take full credit for that. Because when you're in the Midwest, especially, and in Indiana, and if you just are in the store or on the street and you hear t two people conversing, uh, oh my is an acclamation of sorts, an understanding to women in the grocery line. Did you hear about the Jones boy and what happened the other night? Oh my, is that right? Hey, what a game the other night. Oh my, weren't the Hoosiers great? And so uh, when I became the announcer of the IU Sports Network that, was that very first year, I thought, wow, I'm, I'm gonna be doing Big Ten football and basketball. I need a signature phrase. I need, you know, holy cow's been taken, holy Toledo, how about that? You know, all of the great announcers had that one phrase. And I thought, well, how about oh my? And I did the first couple of three football games and I threw in a few oh my's and I was in the graduate dorm and uh, one of my friends down the hall said hey Enberg what a game oh my 
And I thought, that's it. And oh my has been a, my friend ever since 1957. And it all began at Indiana. So when Dick Hurdy was going to receive the Indiana University Distinguished Alumni Service Award, what did he say? Oh my! Ha, 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 ha.